Hey guys, it's open court time, so go grab your green books, and we are going to read a story called Brave as a Mountain Lion. It's a great story, but just a heads up, it's a little long. It's about a 12, 13 minute story, um, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Think about what's going on in the story and follow along as um, I have a lady reading it to you. I'm sure you're sick of my voice by now, so um, I have another teacher reading it to you, so that will be next on our video. Um, so go grab your book, turn to Brave as a Mountain Lion. Whenever you feel comfortable, go ahead and take your open court assessment. You may use your book, okay? This is a longer story. You may want to use your book, especially since we're not going over this together, okay? If you have any questions or you want me to look over your open court assessment, send it to me in Dojo and I will go over it and we'll go over the questions. If you get one wrong, I'll tell you where to look, just like we do in class. That's what Dojo is for. So if you have any questions on this, you need to let me know, okay? So get ready for a cool story. Brave as a Mountain Lion by Anna Herbert Scott, illustrated by Glow Colson. It was snowing hard, pressing his face against the cold glass of the living room window. Spider could barely see his father's horses crowding against the fence. Soon the reservation would be covered with darkness. Spider shivered. Any other night, he would have been hoping his father would reach home before the snow drifted too high to push through. But tonight was different. Tonight, he dreaded his father's coming. In his pocket, Spider could feel two pieces of paper from school. One he wanted to show to his father, one he didn't. Not tonight, not ever. Beside him on the couch, his sister, Winona, was playing with her doll. Lucky kid, thought Spider, Winona was too little to worry about anything, especially school. Just then, Spider saw the blinking red lights of the snowplow clearing the road beside their house. Right behind came his father's new blue pickup. Spider sighed. <sighs> At last, Dad was home. Now the trouble would begin. Winona ran to the back door, but Spider stayed on the couch, waiting. From the kitchen, he could smell dinner cooking, his favorite, deer meat. But tonight, he didn't even feel like eating. Soon he heard the sound of his father and his brother Will stomping the snow from their boots. Spider's father came in with an armful of mail from the post office. He hung up his hat and jacket on the pegs by the kitchen and stretched out in his favorite chair. So what'd you learn in school today? he asked Spider. Not much, said Spider, feeling his pocket. Did you bring home any papers? Spider nodded. How did his father always know? Let's take a look, said his father. Spider took the first paper from his pocket. Here's the good one, he said. Spelling. 100%. Every word correct. Good for you, son. But, Dad, I'm in trouble. Spider shoved the other paper in his father's hand. The teacher wants me to be in the big school spelling bee. Spider's father read aloud. Dear parent, I am pleased to inform you that your son, Spider, has qualified for the school spelling bee, which will be held next Thursday night. We hope you and your family will attend. Spider's mother and grandmother came in from the kitchen with the platter of deer meat and bowls of beans and corn for dinner. That's a good report, little brother, his grandmother said, smiling. But I won't do it, said Spider. Why not? asked Will. I'm too afraid, said Spider. But you're a brave boy, said his father. Why are you afraid? Dad, said Spider, you have to stand high up on the stage in the gym, and all the people will look at you. I'm afraid my legs will freeze together, and I wouldn't be able to walk. And if I did get up there, no sound would come out when I opened my mouth. It's too scary. Oh, I see, said his father. Spider's mother put her hand on his shoulder. You must be hungry. Let's eat. After dinner, Spider sat by the wood stove doing his homework. Dad, were you ever in a spelling bee? he asked. As a matter of fact, I was. Were you scared? I was very scared. I didn't even want to do it. But then my father told me to pretend I was a brave animal. The strongest, bravest animal I could think of. 
Then I wasn't afraid anymore. Later, Spider sat up in bed thinking of animals who weren't afraid of anything. Above his head hung the picture of a mountain lion his dad had painted for him. How about a mountain lion? The king of the beasts? Spider took his flashlight from under his pillow and shined its beam on the face of the great wild creature. Brave as a mountain lion, he said to himself in a loud, strong voice. Brave as a mountain lion, he repeated in his mind as he was falling asleep. I'll try to be brave as a mountain lion, he whispered to his father the next morning as he brushed his hair for school. At recess the next day, Spider peeked into the gymnasium. The huge room was empty. He looked up at the mural painting of the western Shushone people of long ago. They were brave hunters of deer and antelope and elk, just as his father and his uncles were today. At the far end of the gym was a scoreboard with the school's emblem, the eagle. Every Saturday in the winter, Spider and his whole family came to cheer for Will and the basketball team. Those players weren't afraid of anything. Then Spider stared up at the, at the stage. That's where the spellers would stand. He could feel his throat tightening and hear his heart thumping, bumpity, bumpity, bump. How could he ever get up there in front of all those people? Spider ran outside, slamming the gym door behind him. That afternoon, it was still snowing. At home, Spider found his grandmother beating a headband for his father's birthday. Spider watched her dip her needle into the bowls of red and black and white beads. Grandma, were you ever in a spelling bee? No, I was never, his grandmother answered. Are you thinking much about it? All the time, said Spider. What's the worst part? Being up on the stage with all the people looking at you? Oh, that's the easy part, said grandmother. You can be clever. Clever as a coyote. A coyote always has some trick to help him out of trouble. When you're up there on the stage, you don't have to look at the people. You can turn your back on them and pretend they aren't even there. In bed that night, Spider pulled the covers over his head. Brave as a lion. Clever as a coyote. He kept repeating to himself as he fell asleep. The next morning, Spider scraped a peephole in the ice on his bedroom window. He could see, couldn't see the far mountains for the swirling snow. He smiled as he packed his book bag. If it kept snowing like this, maybe the principal would choose to close the school tomorrow. In class, all day, all everyone could, could talk about was the spelling bee. Can we count on you, Spider? asked Miss Phillips, his, his teacher. Spider shook his head. Maybe, he said. I haven't made up my mind yet. You'd better make up your mind soon, said Miss Phillips. The spelling bee is tomorrow night. After lunch, Spider walked by the gym door. But this time, he didn't open it. He didn't have to. He remembered just how everything looked. Scary. When he thought about it, a shiver went all the way down his spine. By the afternoon, the snow had piled in drifts higher than Spider's head. Spider got a bowl of popcorn and went to the carport to watch Will shoot baskets. Time after time, the ball slipped through the net. Will almost never missed. How about some popcorn for me? Will asked his little brother. Spider brought back another bowl from the kitchen. Are you practicing for the spelling bee? asked Will. I've decided not to be in it, said Spider. I'm going to be brave when I get bigger. Will nodded. I remember those spelling bees. Were you afraid? asked Spider. I was scared silly, said Will. I was so scared, I was afraid I'd wet my pants. Then I learned the secret. What's the secret? asked Spider. To be silent. Silent? asked Spider. What does that do? It keeps you cool. When I've had a hard shot to make and the whole team depends on me, that's when I get very silent. Spider didn't say anything. He just watched his brother shooting one basket after another. Then he saw her. High above the shelves of paint and livestock medicines was a tiny insect. It was his old friend, Little Spider, dangling on the long strand as she had spun a new part of her web. She was silent. Silent as the moon. Spider laughed. How could he have forgotten? 
grandmother often told him how he was, how when he was a baby in his cradle board, he used to be he used to watch for hours while a little spider spun her web above his head. She had been his very first friend ever since his family that had called him Spider. Taking the stepladder, Spider climbed up close so he could watch the tiny creature. How brave she was, dropping down into space with nothing to hang on to, and how clever, weaving a web out of nothing but her own secret self. Say something, he whispered. The little insect was silent, but Spider felt like she was talking to him in her own mysterious way. Listen to your spirit, she seemed to say. Listen to your spirit, and you'll never be afraid. The next morning the snow had stopped. Outside Spider's window, icicles glistened in the sun. No chance of school being closed today. Brave as a mountain lion, clever as a coyote, and silent as a spider. Spider thought to himself as he buttoned his vest. Winona pushed open the door. Are you going to do it? I'm going to do it, Spider answered. That night, all the family came, his grandmother who lived with them, and his other grandparents, and his father, and his mother, and his three aunts, and two uncles, and Will and Winona, and lots of their cousins. Three of his cousins were going to be in the spelling bee, too. Brave as a mountain lion, Spider stepped up the steps to the stage. Clever as a coyote, he turned his back so he wouldn't see the rows of people down below. Silently, he listened to his spirit. Bumpity, bump, bump, went his heart. All the best spellers in the class were up on the stage, standing in a line. The principal gave them the words, one by one. At first, the words were easy. Yellow, said the principal. I have a yellow dog. Spider kept his eyes on the principal's face. Yellow, said Spider. Y-E-L-L-O-W. Yellow. Correct, said the principal. Then the words got a little harder. February, said the principal. Soon it will be February. It was Spider's turn again. February, said Spider, remembering the R. Capital F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y. February. Correct, said the principal. Finally, there were only two spellers left. Standing. Spider and Elsie, a girl from the other side of the reservation. Terrific, said the principal. We have a terrific basketball team. Terrific, said Spider, taking a deep, deep breath. T-E-R-R-I-F-F-I-C. Terrific. Incorrect, said the principal. Then she turned to Elsie. Terrific. We have a terrific basketball team. Terrific. T-E-R-R-I-F-I-C. Terrific. Correct, said the principal. Let's give a hand to our two winners from Miss Phillips' class, Elsie in first place and Spider in second place. It was over. Spider climbed down the steps and found the rows where his family was sitting. Spider's father shook his hand and Will slapped him on the back. You did it, his mother said proudly. You stood up there right in front of everyone. It was easy, said Spider. You were brave, said his father, brave as a mountain lion. And clever, said his grandmother, clever as a coyote. I wasn't even afraid, Spider thought. I listened to my spirit, but now I'm hungry, he told his family. Hungry as a bear. Let's all go home and eat.